Hi, I'm Sheldon Picotti. I teach a course at the University of Texas in the Radio Television Film Department called Writing for Interactive Media and Games. And I've built some open source tools for the students that help them create small interactive conversations. And so I'm going to show those right now to kind of give you a sense of what they are. As you can see, there's little blocks for having characters say things. Uh, you can put these blocks together into sequences. So they play scenes. And uh, this isn't a tutorial, so don't worry about not understanding everything that I'm doing, but they're pretty easy to snap together, just like Legos. And oh, sometimes they don't go together. And so you can build whole scenes. So these these are um, mostly blocks that I built. These, these uh, outer ones here that wrap around are part of the toolkit, and they let you control different sprites um, from in one location. So you can have your entire scene in one place and, and browse over it and see that it makes sense. And so, you know, you can make little cutscenes without a whole lot of effort. Uh, and this is programming, but it's it's visual programming, so it's not quite as, as daunting. And so, what I want to do is kind of put in perspective, you know, how this toolkit fits into other tools that are similar. So, We'll start at the beginning of the present presentation. So the story begins with this program called Scratch. And it was developed at the MIT uh, Lifelong Kindergarten Group. It was aimed specifically toward teaching younger kids how to program. So elementary school kids and uh, junior high uh, school kids. And it looks very similar. Uh, it actually looks almost exactly like what you were looking at. Because what I've built is built on top of uh, a similar program called BYOB which is built on top of this so they, they all share the same UI and this is actually yeah, a bit of code from uh, the early semesters when I was teaching the course when we were using Scratch so we you know would build things like sequences of, of one-liners for a character and whatnot so um, one thing I like about the toolkit uh, Scratch and BYOB is that the blocks really resemble tools you see in game development. This is ConEdit from, from Deus Ex. And so, you know, when we were building Deus Ex, we were using basically commands for each piece of dialogue, uh, camera angles, setting flags, uh, sending messages into the, the game. And, uh, you know, that experience of writing in a game, you know, with, with the game logic right at, at um, our fingertips, I think was, was really uh, positive and I think, I think it's a, a good way for game writers to work, you know, very close to uh, the, the actual machinery of the game and you know, then you can make uh, you know, content that really matches what's going on and, you know, dynamically so some goofy thing happens like the player wanders into uh, the wrong bathroom then you can make a joke about it later because you're, you're in touch with you know, the actual logic behind the game. So. Um, so that's why I like Scratch, but you know, Scratch being aimed at younger, a younger audience is somewhat limited um, for the types of things that, that we want to do. So I've been looking for, for more advanced options, and there, ha there are actually many offshoots of Scratch. And so here's a couple that I'm aware of, um, Panther on the right and BYOB on the left. So as I mentioned, BYOB is, is what um, I use to develop the toolkit for the class. And it's, it's geared actually toward university students who are non-programmers but who want to learn uh, something about the structure of programming. So it has some pretty sophisticated features in it that uh, make it very extensible. So you can actually build your own blocks. That's, that's where the name comes from. And that's very handy. So you can, you can actually build blocks with other blocks. Um, so you, without, again, w without being a professional software developer, you can actually build some kind of... Uh, layered functionality and, and start to build up your capabilities uh, pretty quickly. Um, so that's pretty nice stuff. They're working on a new version uh, which is BYOB 4 and they're calling it Snap. Um, it's not quite officially released yet so um, the game bo blocks uh, code is based on BYOB 3 and um, it's not a, a standalone uh, editor like these other um, icons on, on the screen here. It's, it's a basically a set of code that you import into BYOB. Um, so all these tools taken together are um, academic tools. They're really geared toward exploring concepts or teaching. And for that reason, you know, they, they are not really geared for commercial development, so it's worth recognizing that um, it, it won't be a direct path toward creating a commercial game. So if you 
use something like uh, BYOB, this is what your uh, result will look like. It, you can actually build executables for Mac and PC and Linux, which is great. You, c you can show work to a prospective employer. You can distribute your game to people and not require them to install BYOB. But you know it's running inside of a player here with these buttons on top. You don't really get the opportunity just to create a start screen. So, so that's one drawback, and it's worth mentioning too that this this code, though it's very easy, all the machinery underneath it has some performance issues with it. It, it doesn't really scale up like uh, some of the more commercial engines. Uh, the game blocks library contains uh, blocks for cartoon animations and physics and some things like that, uh, and they work just fine for for most situations. But if you want to do something like have 20 or 30 marbles bouncing down a hill or something, I, I would suspect they don't scale um, as well as most of the other engines. So so that's, those are the limitations, but what I think is great about um, this technology is it, it kind of is a gateway, I think, for novice game developers to get into um, development, you know, without having to um, rely on an expert to, to be able to code a game or, or you know, use a, a, an advanced tool to make it. So, you know, it's a starting point, but it um, from Scratch and BYOB, uh, you can move toward other tools that actually are also based on Scratch and let you do real commercial software. So, um, Google put out a program called App Inventor. It was uh, originally called, I think, Android App Inventor. Now it's called MIT App Inventor, and it's um, become a also somewhat of an academic project. But it lets you build, you know, full-on Android applications, and uh, this other program down here called Stencil is uh, geared specifically toward game development, and it's it's cross-platform, and they're you know rapidly adding new platforms. Uh, so I think they they have web and iOS, and they're looking to add Android. So um, so there are commercial options that that build on this technology. I will give you a gl glimpse at them. This is App Inventor. There's a lot more to it than this. Uh, you build your, your interface uh, visually as well, but if you get down to doing logic and code, this is what it looks like. It's built on uh, the same underlying uh, code library as Scratch. Um, so same concepts in terms of snapping things together to make things happen. Here's a glimpse at Stencil. Um, Stencil is crafted specifically for game development, so you see there's scenes and actors and behaviors and that sort of thing. You actually can draw levels uh, and populate them with uh, with actors and all that sort of thing. So co familiar comes concepts for for game developers. And if you do get down to doing some your, of your own custom logic, um, this is what it looks like. It's you know very similar technology. Um, you, you do interact at a higher level most of the time. You're usually using a behavior and, and using a dialog box to use it. So even higher level than this, but uh, fundamentally uh, built on top of uh, this kind of block programming model. So you know some options for you know what I'm seeing is a you know a potential gateway for new game developers. Uh, this arrow at the bottom is kind of showing a progression from simpler kind of gateway uh, environments for playing with games to you know doing more serious um, development. So with that in mind, you know uh, if someone started with this kind of uh, visual block type technology, you'd probably be in, in good shape to pick up some of these other uh, sort of gateway game um, engines. And let you build either specific types of games or that, that make you know game development uh, easy and fun um, and then from there it's not so hard to imagine starting starting to do some work in one of the more commercial tools um, at this point you'd probably be specializing you know in one aspect or the other of game development um, so those tools get you know a lot bigger and more elaborate um, and then you know if you're really a little crazy you might start doing some actual coding so that's that's a kind of a global view of how I see game blocks fitting into the tools that are out there. I don't want to pretend this is a very s a complete survey. I don't know myself what all the new stuff is, but this is kind of how I see the landscape. Um, so with that in mind, I'm going to give another glimpse at things you can do in game blocks just to show you what's there. And then subsequent videos will um, talk more about... I want to show a different one first. Subsequent videos will talk more about how you actually set this stuff up and begin using it. So I'll show you this platformer game real quick. Um, very simple interactions, but gets the um, uh, student started with a, a familiar game type. And you know, even though this is a, the writing class, oftentimes writers work with space as well as 
time with with writing so it's more than just the unfolding of a scene but you want to be able to you know uh, put your content in, in, in locations let the player discover it at their own pace and discover you know how they navigate through um, interactions and goals and that sort of thing so it's you know seems like a little bit off the reservation for a writing class but uh, it's good to have ways to get into working with, with the kind of space you want to work with for your the story you're telling um, so that's a, a little platformer example. Um, here's some physics blocks. Let's get it started. Um, so the physics engine takes a while to initialize. This is a bit of evidence of how this, um, this stuff might not scale for very large, complicated games. But um, as you can see, you've got you know a basic space game that is pretty easy to put together. Uh, the engine just kind of takes a a, a command about which key to use and then it'll give you thrusting basically and you have drag on it. Uh, there's collision, uh, collision with the wall as well. And then you know you can interact with these sprites. Once you put physics on them you can give them, let's say, give a velocity to this guy. He'll bounce around. You can give him an acceleration. So like it could be like wind blowing on him and uh, knocks him around. He bounces around still. Make him ro uh, rotate. Um, you can put a drag on the rotation and everything. So, you know, th there's some stuff here that uh, is pretty fun to play with. Uh, like I said, probably doesn't scale, but I think it gets folks started doing um, game development without a lot of um, setup, a lot of um, pain. So um, so that's that's uh, game blocks in a, in a nutshell. Like I said, um, future videos will have instructions on how to install the toolkit and on how to use the different blocks. Uh, thanks for listening.